Today on Ham Radio QRP, we look at loop on ground antennas, what they do for you, and how to make one. This is a weak signal on 30 meter. If I put the noise canceling in, this is my loop on ground receive. Very copyable. What about on the main antenna? He's copyable, but hear all the noise. And we can take noise canceling off the FTDX10 and completely copy them. If we go back to the receive antenna, it's just painful. That's what I'm talking about. See, no noise canceling turned on. Turn it on. And it's all the way up. Let me bring it down to something reasonable. Very copyable. If I go to the main antenna. We don't need this much gain on the main. You can hear the signal in there, but turning the RF gain down doesn't help. There's just not enough signal in there to pull up. So, noise canceling, RF gain rolled back, as opposed to just using the receive antenna. I'm telling you, these loop on ground receive antennas, at least at my station, make copy so much more pleasant. Think of the loop on ground antenna as a more approachable, compact cousin to the venerable beverage antenna. Harold Beverage's experiments in the 1920s involving long wires hugging the ground revealed the potential for noise rejection and clear signal reception that the loop on ground continues to explore. So why would 60 feet of wire oriented as a square, fed at a corner, pressed into the ground and covered by your lawn make a good receive antenna? Haven't we always been told that antennas work better the higher they are? I'm no expert on this or much of anything, but the most useful information I've found that demystified the loop on ground antennas was on Matt Roberts' KK5JY's website. So take a look there. Here I'm showing the page that it's on. First, you'll need to construct the transformer because you want to DC isolate the antenna from your coax. So I'm showing here a picture from Matt's website that shows a binocular core wound five to six times with 30 gauge magnet wire attached to the antenna. And then there's another two turns of magnet wire wound through the core that attaches to your coax. And here you can see a picture of my completed transformer on the ground. I used normal 75 ohm variable TV coax, ran it to an arrestor and then the rest of the way up into the shack. Once it's in the shack, you have a couple of options. You can run it to a receive antenna switch, as shown here at DX Engineering RTR1A, or you could run it to an SDR and listen to the received audio on an SDR. I'm going to talk about how I run it, though, to this RTR unit. This receive antenna switch allows transceivers, such as my FTDX10, 
that only has a single antenna port to, in essence, have a additional receive antenna port. So you see a number of connections on the back. One is for your main antenna, the other goes to your radio, and you see a couple ports for the receive antenna. They're for convenience, use whichever port type works with your connectors. Here you see a diagram of the connections. You see the receive antenna coming into the switch, the main antenna, my doublet, coming into the switch, and the switch is connected to my radio. There's also a connection to the radio's transmit to ground switch. Now in the case of the FTDX, there is no direct output to a ground switch. You have to use the optional cable, the SCU-28 from Yesu, to wire out a connection to that transmit on ground switch. And this is important. The switch doesn't operate unless it's told to operate by that transmit to ground switch. Whenever you press your push to talk or send code on your key, it takes that switch to ground and that causes the receiver switch, the receive only switch, to, to switch out the receive antenna to the transmit antenna. Additionally, in my case, I'm taking the transmit antenna output from the switch and sending it to my SDR, my SDR play software defined receiver. And that receiver then feeds um, cluster logging as well as CW skimmer to provide the cluster logging to my local logging program. And it gives you the ability to see an extended pan adapter that's larger than what you can see sometimes on your FTDX10. Okay, so hopefully this has given you an idea or some incentive to build your own loop on ground antenna. They don't take much space. And get some quiet receive that um, you may be struggling with noise on your, your current antenna. My doublet in my attic is extremely noisy. Um, my 80 meter uh, off center fed dipole outside the house is less noisy, but still I found that the receive antenna has just changed so much with my operating. I'm able to work stations comfortably that were previously painful to work and even hear some stations that I couldn't hear at all in the noise of my antenna that still give me good signal reports because my antennas transmit better than they hear. So that's all for now.